enjoying the rhythm of the music. You're listening to Following On, another excellent day of Test Match Cricket. The second day has been full of action, drama and a hint of controversy. I'm Mark Nicholas and over the next 20 minutes or so I'll be with Matt Pryor and Darren Goff as we look back at the action. India closing on 54 for one, having bowled out England for 134, having been bowled out for 329 themselves. We'll discuss all the main talking points as uh, we get through the fact that 15 wickets fell on the day and we'll talk to England's assistant coach, Graham Thorpe. So there's plenty to get stuck into. You're listening to Following On. Fifteen wickets falling in a day. I mean, that's um, that's big, isn't it? Fifteen wickets in a day. I've got a stat here somewhere. I think that's the most here in uh, Madras. I can't find it, annoyingly now. I had it written down somewhere. Yes, here we go. Um, so, most wickets in a day's play in Chennai. Fifteen, India, England, and uh, uh, and the West Indies fourth test, 1978-79. So, a lot, a lot of wickets in a day. Um, is the pitch unfair? There you go, Goffey. Uh, well, I think it is. And, and I'm not just saying it because England are on... Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're staring down the barrel of a defeat. But I just think on the first day, um, when you're looking um, to win the toss and bat first, you, you're realistically looking to get, especially in these conditions, bound 350, 400. Now, India weren't too far away, were they? They got 329, but that's, I would say, because England didn't bowl very, very well uh, when we look at it. Uh, probably about 80 too many. I think we've discussed that. And I think we got a fair uh, idea of what the pitch was going to do when India started bowling on it against England. Yet, clouded, because England 134 all out, Mark, is not good enough, even with the ball turning. Um, the discipline wasn't there from all the players. I think a couple of players showed, but if you get in and, and have the technique and have the patience and you're brave, you can get in and you can score runs. Agree with that? Yeah, I think so. I, I think you you always want to look at what you know what what's the perfect pitch. It's it's a fair contest between bat and ball, isn't it? Ultimately, mm. whether it's swing, seam, a good pitch th- to score on and bat on, it's something in it for the spinners, and. Well, is this is this a fair contest? Probably not. I think it's it's sided too much in the spinners' favour. Um, you but know, I'm I'm certainly not making excuses or anything. No, I put it to you that it's not sided quite so much as the first test in favour of the team that wins the toss. In the first test, it was flat to bat on for a couple of days, and then it really deteriorated. So the advantage of batting then was enormous. In this test, it was pretty handy to bowl on yesterday. Yeah, I, I think you're right. First test was a massive toss of the coin. It was really flat, wasn't it, that first test? I mean, uh, it was hard work for the Indian bowlers, bowling against Joe Root, Dom Sibley, Ben Stokes. But this one, like I said, you, you still had a chance. If you bowled well, even after you'd lost the test, you could still be in this test match because you could. it's all about first innings for both sides. England had an opportunity, if they would have bowled better, to bowl them out and go past them or go level with them and have a chance of winning the game becomes a one innings game then but unfortunately we didn't we've we bowled poorly on the first day we started well this morning uh, when you look at the second play we took the four wickets uh, quite quickly but the way we battered uh, we, no matter whether we bat first or second it's given us no chance really of winning the game I think that's this is a really fair point and a, and a good point to bring up because again I've had a lot of people on, on social media saying win the toss win the game and I, I don't agree I, th- I think there was enough going on yesterday that, that England does a bowling lineup and the, the question you have to ask is if England won the toss yesterday and batted would they have got 329 on this pitch I, I honestly don't think they would have no, I, don't think I think the Indian, Indian spinners would have been all over them yesterday so I, I agree I would rather I don't think it's a fair battle I think it's turning too much and it's doing too much but it's this is a more fair example of not you know does the toss come into play mark i agree with you last week win the toss win the game is more prevalent than this one yeah the, the, this is the reverse um of a really flat deck i saw a test in melbourne a couple of years ago in england my last there and it was so flat you couldn't bowl anybody out and it was a boring draw uh, too much in favor of batsmen this one is probably too much in favor of the bowler is well it's happened in antigua summer. on uh, numerous occasions and it? it's been too flat to bowl the opposition out but yeah i, I mean when it when it comes down to that even the win the toss the first 
test match and what we're talking about here, you win the game. I, I agree with that, but we also, it's not as easy as that because England on the last tour there, remember, got 400 winning the toss and India went past them and got 600 and then bowled them out. What you do if you win the toss and it is flat and what you would expect Indian conditions to be, You've got to get 400, 450, haven't you? And England went and did that. So once they got 500, they were in an unbelievable position oh, to win the game. A uh, great position. Yes, well, Akash Chopra, who has played, obviously played test cricket for India in the early 2000s, is an our Indian expert working with us on the coverage, said, didn't he, on, on, on air, he said, it is no longer true to say that every pitch in India, when India play at home, is a raging turner. Um, he said, in fact, India believe they've got an all-round game. And yes, pitches spin a bit as the game goes on and, and, and you've got to be able to bat against spin. But in general, he said, this one is, is not satisfactory. And he agreed. He thinks it's too much in favour of the spinner. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, I'm, as the game's gone on and you hear more commentary about it, I, at first I was probably a bit cynical and thought, oh, India have definitely prepared a, a wicket to do all sorts. But I think that's a fair point that Akash has made. And actually the Indian team wouldn't want that. And it's a sound argument saying that actually with it doing so much, you're actually bringing yes, you're, you're, lesser you're bringing spinners less good player into, in, yeah. into the game. And I, I think that's a really sound argument. Why would, you know, Ravi Ashwin would, doesn't want to be on the, bowling on the same pitch doing as much for a Leach or a Moen Ali. Yes. You, you know, that's well, a, he doesn't need it to turn no, as much well, because exactly. he's got so many variations. Exactly. Yeah, Like yeah. taking Manchester City to a non-league team and playing on a mud bath. It's harder for them to display their skills and easier, yeah. easier for the opposition to yeah. get something from it. OK, um, let, let, let's go back to the start of the day when in England had to take four wickets quickly. Uh, remember, India were 300 for six overnight, but bowled out quickly for 329. So that was efficient. It was indeed, and I think Moe, Moe and Ali picked up a couple of easy wickets, didn't they? We were a great bit of uh, work from Ben Folks behind the stumps. I'm sure Matt will elaborate on that. But for me, Ollie Stone uh, bowled beautifully. Um, 15, just under 16 overs he bowled, 3 for 47. And for a fast bowler on a pitch uh, which is pretty flat to the seamer, um, I thought he bowled beautifully, showed a huge, huge heart, um, and bowled terrific pace uh, throughout uh, India's first innings. Yeah, and so having done that job efficiently, Rishabh Pant, Pant having hit some very good shots, what mattered really was how England started. And, and unfortunately, they didn't start well. And it's very hard in India to drag it back, isn't it? It's, it's clever that Ashwin opens the bowling. And, and he's worked very hard at bowling with the new ball, so he's comfortable with it. And of course, he's getting the extra bounce. It, it's difficult. It is. And all, all the conversation we had about spin and how much it's turning and bouncing and everything else, the one thing you'd be telling yourself as an England batsman is don't get out to the seamer. Don't get out to it. And that first wicket burns LBW to Ishant. And, you know, it's just another one where he's fallen over. And maybe, you know, maybe in the subconscious, he's preparing himself so much for the challenge of spin that he, he maybe didn't quite face what was in front of him. Was actually, actually I've got to get through a champ first. A bit unlucky, wasn't he? He was I, unlucky. I don't often say that, but it was just, you know, reviewed. Umpire's and, call, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> just clipping the top of leg and all the angles suggest it could easily have missed leg. And, I mean, listen, he's given out and there's lots of ways of looking at DRS. Some people think you should get rid of umpire's call altogether. And if it's hitting the stumps, it's out. Others say if 25%, if it's hitting 25% of the stump, it's not out. And if it's hitting 75% of the leg or off stump, it is out. And there's lots of ways of looking at it. The fact is he, he got on the wrong side of one. England got a lot of those sort of things go their way in the first test and they haven't in, in this test. So once he had gone, it was going to be difficult. Dominic Sibley is learning on the job of playing spin, so too Dan Lawrence, but they're, they're so inexperienced against this level of spinner on such a surface. Yeah, Dom Sibley, I mean, there's always been that worry about him. Um, I remember when he first came into the side, you know, and there was loads of conversations about with the tours that were coming up, they were a bit worried about the way Dom Sibley plays against spin. I thought probably a little bit harsh. Yeah, he's not natural, but there is a lot of people that are not naturally good players against spin, but you find a way, don't you, Matt? And, uh, and I think... In Sri Lanka, that last innings, he talked about he was in a dark place, wasn't sure about where his next run were going to come from against spin, because he kept getting out with the new ball, the left-arm spinner. But actually, he showed a little bit of fight. Um, today, he would be more disappointed. He got in at 60, got to 16, and then, then got out. But I think Joe Root, who's played so well um, in Sri Lanka and in that first test against India, he got done by the probably extra height of Axar Patel, who I thought bowled well as uh, another 
a good find for India. He bowled beautifully. I know the missing Jadeja, mm. who him and Ashwin together would have been <laughs> unbelievable to face. Yeah. But I think Patel, with, they look like they found uh, a good left arm. So there. when you say the height, you say he was bowling it from his height into the pitch. That got him a bit more bounce. And, and early the pace on he in your innings, it. to sweep against that extra bounce, pretty difficult. At, at the pace he was bowling yeah, it. If you look point, at his yeah. bowling speeds compared to the three spinners England used, Root, uh, Leach and Ali, he was bowling, what, three or four, five miles uh, kilometers per hour quicker and that's so hard to sweep when you've got a pitch that's dusting and bouncing so Joe Root probably fell into the trap of trying to sweep him too early on in that innings wrong Thought, shot thoughts on Dan Lawrence um, Matt yeah I thought he again he, he, he looked pretty assured he looked um, he looked tidy he actually looked like he had a game plan he knew what he was trying to do um, he, he got a ball that just, I mean, he got a ball that you can't get on this wicker that bounced and spat and into his glove and went to short leg. But he was trying to do the right thing. And I think on a, on a wicket like this, if you've got a game plan and he's sticking to it and you get one with your number on it, fair enough. It's if you come out of that game plan or you play a shot that really you shouldn't, you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll get onto it, but Roots and Stokes, England's two, you know, biggest players, you can, you can argue they played poor shots, I, I would say, on the, on this wicket. Dan Lawrence wasn't the case. He, he got it. He got one that you can get on this wicket but up until then he was trying to do the right things uh, I agree with that but I think he struggled against Ashwin I just, oh, yeah. he, he, wa he wasn't sure which way the ball was going he wasn't picking him and he found it very difficult he showed guts he showed determination he didn't panic but you're right he got a decent delivery didn't he turned bounced caught back pad uh, very difficult but he wasn't full of confidence to Ashwin I think that was one of the problems he had no I don't, I don't but I think early on there, there wasn't anyone that looked confident uh, in England batsman it was really only until Ollie Pope walked out with Ben Folkes for me was when he actually saw two England batsmen go, I've got a plan, I feel comfortable in my defence here and I know where I'm going to score. They weren't looking for boundaries, they were looking for ones and twos, they were playing with soft yep. hands. And actually, that was the only time I felt, OK, you've got two batsmen who feel semi in control here. Yeah, I'm, oh, I don't really like saying this. I think he's got the right mind. I think Dan Lawrence has got the you know, attitude and I think he's got courage. And I think he makes big scores. He's got an excellent record for Essex. Started when he was young. I'm worried about him te technically. I think that grip is so strong and that face is so shut that to adjust to test match cricket and the quality bowlers persevering in areas where you're not so good, uh, you don't get the release balls you do in first class cricket. I, I think he, he might find it difficult at the top of the order with his, with his method as it is now. Yeah, there are not many batsmen or, play or players that come in and don't have to maybe get found out a little bit and don't have to change and adapt their game. I think that it will be no different for, for Dan Lawrence. And I think you're right. It will then be how quickly he can change and adapt his game. Well, it's, it's not an easy tour to go on, is it? Let's be honest no, about it. A young no, no, lad, no, no, your no first way, overseas no, no. tour going to Sri Lanka in India, you can get found out. Um, it's very, very difficult conditions. Like I said, this is day two of a test match and the ball's dusting, turning. Somebody's been hit on the head at bowling off spin. I mean, that tells you it's doing, <laughs> it's doing it's a little doing bit, a bit yeah. on, on day yeah. two. And also, so. you could say that Dom Sibley has a method that suggests he wouldn't succeed and he's done pretty well over the last 18 months, hasn't he? He has, um, but again, Spin, like I said, the big worry was how he would play it. Um, I think that m was a massive innings for him, that uh, second test match in Sri Lanka. Um, and I think he's done okay. I mean, that first test here uh, obviously got the better of the conditions, but it's what England needed. They needed an opening batsman that's got the right temperament, that's got some guts, got some determination, and might not look pretty a lot of the time, but can bat. And when he gets in, he stays in. And I think that's what England were looking out for, that sort of character. And that's why they like Crawley, and that's why they like Sibley. Okay. Definitely. And I, I, just to add to that, I think you look at one of England's most, probably the most successful batsman, Sir Alistair Cook. When he first came into the team and played in the subcontinent, he'll hate me for saying this, but again, spin. You, you just thought he's a walking wicket, but he found his way. He had two shots. He had two scoring shots. You look at his stats in the subcontinent against spin. You'd think he is an absolute worldie. I think he averages about 60 or something against spin because mm. he changed his game and he found his method and then he just stuck to it. Come hell or high water, he just stuck to his method. He'd get a little sweep shot out. He'd wait for a cut and he'd keep, he would just block everything else. And that was it. So he turned himself into a very, very good player of spin. And one of the best pliers of his ability that I've ever seen anywhere. Um, okay, now I'm going to pick you up on a comment about Root and Stokes. I, I'm not going to back up the Root theory, but uh, you think that both were, weren't the best shots. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I think for the reasons we've already covered, uh, and Goffey uh, has said it, Axel Patel, on a wicket like this, your batsman's mentality 
particularly to a left arm uh, spinner, left arm orthodox coming into the stumps, bowling from high, quite flat and fast. To play a sweep shot is a high, high risk shot. You, it's particularly early on. If, you, if you're on 40, 50, 60, fair enough. But early on in your innings, under pressure like they are, you will be saying to yourself, I've got to play my stumps. I want to play as straight as possible for as long as possible. And I think Root wanted a pr- to, to kind of release the pressure, took a bit of a punt and it didn't come off. And I think, I think it wasn't, the, for me, it wasn't the right shot to that bowler at that time in the game. I, I totally agree with that. And I think Joe, he'll be highly critical of himself and he'd say, listen, it's been a big scoring shot for him. But if you look out, you have to look at other batsmen and how they've scored the runs. You look at Roy Sharma, 160 in that first innings. You look at Rehani. Did they sweep the left arm spinner? Not really. They did it against the off spin. They look to stay in their crease, play him off the back foot, score square of the wicket. But to try and sweep, again, the angle he was coming at and the pace he was bowling at when he first came to the crease, I agree, was a high risk shot. The Stokes one's interesting, isn't it? Because that is a magic... It looks a magic ball. If you watch that, just see it on TV, you've walked in, you've not been watching any of the game, and you see that ball pitch and dust and turn coming from the angle he was coming round the wicket to pitch on middle and then it off. It's, it's, it's a great delivery. But technically, you could say, was, was he in a position to defend the ball? Or was he just not expecting it to turn that much? It's, it's a difficult one, the Stokes one. I, I really do, because he, he played it open, didn't he? His front foot became real open, but he was playing it straight rather than probably playing with an open face. So uh, for, for me, why he was so angry is because I believe he got suckered in. And I, and I only say this because mm. I've, been, I've literally been in the dressing room playing on wickets like this when batsmen have done exactly what Ben Stokes... You say to yourself again, you have to play straight. Play straight for longer than you think. And the ball has come very full... It's pitched about middle and leg, and he's just gone to lean on it and push it through mid wicket, and it's gripped, spun into off stump. Now, if he was playing straight and he held the bat, bat right. straight, he would have exactly he would have defended it and kept the ball out. There's no way he would have been bowled. But by coming across the line and trying to just work it into, he wasn't trying to hit it for a boundary or anything like that. But he just played across the line slightly. Grips and off you go, bold. Well, you're not expecting it to turn that much. It, 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 like I said, if we all just looked at the screen and walked into a room and we saw that delivery, we'd be all be saying, "What a great delivery it was, wouldn't we?" <laughs> Let's be honest about it. <laughs> a bit like the, the Shane Warne delivery to Mike Gatting many, many years ago. Uh, the two cricketers that we're loath to be critical of. <laughs> well, the great, I mean, they're giving they're us great so players. much Absolutely. pleasure. And <laughs> but um, our, our job is the analysis and the explanation of the day's play. Uh, Ben's had a bit of a problem over the years with off break bowlers who pitch it pretty straight at him he gets a bit open he gets that that right leg out of the way and 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 he started to correct that actually and he just didn't get it quite right did he? yeah and, and on that point these guys are so good that we expect them to be phenomenal every day we don't expect you know it, it's marginal it, it is really really marginal and another day that ball slides on he, he you know ben tucks it in for two runs yep. and we go well played just so t- happens today he didn't play straight it spun past him and we all sit here and go he should have played straight <laughs> and what a frustrate bed and he talks about it he does not want to get out caught back pad or round a slip uh, defending one he would rather same, same as Rishabh Pant would rather attack the bowler and have attacking intent about his game so he'll, that will frustrate him even more but he was trying to push it for one <laughs> Right, what do you make of Ben Folkes' day? Because um, he clearly he made some runs. He was unbeaten at the end. He handled the spin well. He had one good stumping and missed a stumping. Tell us. Yeah, I think first and foremost, I was I was really impressed with his batting. Forty odd not out. Um, and I think we made. We, I mean, we had the discussion earlier earlier on air that everyone talks about. He's a wicket keeping purist, but actually, does that take away from how good he is as a batter? Um, over a hundred first class games, averages just under thirty nine, which is you know pretty good stats. And and again, he looked really assured. We we saw him in Sri Lanka coming. In for his debut coming out five down for not many on the board and scored 100 um, you know his temperament his technique uh, I thought he had a fantastic day with a bat and then look there's an argument he's he's kept brilliantly first innings he's out batting and then he 10 minute turnaround he's uh, <laughs> Maybe has a cons getting tired, maybe? <laughs> well, okay, we can ask him, actually, because it's not Graham Thorpe we're going to talk to. It is Ben. Um, and and Matt, Matt Prowse just talking about you, Ben. <laughs> we're, we're looking at England's day here, the day that started so well for you and didn't finish quite as well. Yeah, it was obviously a few wickets. Um, this morning was great. Uh, yeah, obviously, the batting didn't go as planned. Um, pretty tricky conditions. Um, and, yeah, I guess a few, a few dismissals. Um, they were a little bit tough, so 
Uh, unfortunately, yeah, not the best day with the bat. No, it's very difficult now for you in the dressing room, I imagine, being so far behind the game to to find all the positives that uh, that cricketers look for after a bad day because it, it, it with three days of the match left and such a margin between the two teams, how can you lift yourselves? Yeah, it's obviously difficult, um, but we we got to just keep fighting and just try and do what, whatever we can. we got to try and take um, our wickets tomorrow um, and then see what whatever the game situation is. Um, and, and yeah, just give it a good crack. Do you feel the pitch is fair? We know it's difficult, but do you think it's fair to both sides? Do you think that when, when uh, India were batting yesterday, there was enough in it for you and perhaps you didn't bowl quite as well as you might have done? Yeah, potentially. I think um, yesterday obviously did a bit... Um, but I'd say it was uh, sporadic balls going through the top. Um, I think as, as the surface has got drier, most balls are taking a puff of dust um, and doing a fair bit. So, I th- yeah, I think it's, it's obviously getting trickier to bat on. The, Matt was saying how well he thought you played. It, it carries on from what we saw in Sri Lanka, which incredibly is, uh, is more than two years ago. Uh, you do seem, I, I don't want to tempt fate, but you seem not just to be comfortable a bit, a, against spin, but to understand it. And I wonder if a lifetime behind the stumps w- w- was the reason for that. Yeah, I, th- I think obviously um, keeping a lot, you, you see angles and that sort of thing. But I think I, when I was younger, I went to um, Sri Lanka quite a lot and got quite a lot of experience facing spin. Um, and I think I learned a lot through that, um, which I think stood me in good stead with the game, was, kind of game plan. Was that as hard a challenge against spin as you've ever had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd say that was the hardest challenge I've had um, batting, I'd say. Um, yeah, just, just, just the amount it was spinning and mm. uh, spitting. Um, it was, it was, yeah, it was a, was it was really a real one. pity, wasn't it, when Ollie got out? Because the two of you who know each other so well, were just sort of inching England back into the game. You know, if you put on 100, who knows? Yeah, the, the way he was playing as well, he looked really um, assured and had, had a good game plan. He was nice and busy. Um, and yeah, I guess to get out like that's pretty unfortunate. Um, and yeah, a, a time when we didn't really uh, need it. So an excellent stumping this morning and uh, a missed one of a ball that really turned and bounced and went down the leg side this evening. Um, we think you'd nail the second one uh, nine out of ten. Uh, uh, any mental tiredness there, or just one of those things? The uneven bounce is difficult when you go to pitch like that. I would say. Yeah, I, I think um, obviously you want to take them, but um, I think with the new ball, I find it spits quite quickly or skids quickly, um, so it does a bit of both. So I think I think that's one thing I find a real challenge is, is with the new ball um, against spinners. Well, we've enjoyed watching your innings. We we can't kid ourselves that we think you're in the pound seats in the match, but we wish you well tomorrow. And uh, it's good to hear that the dressing room will find some spirit going forward. Uh, um, have a decent night, good kip, and get fighting tomorrow. Cheers, Mark. Okay, thanks, Ben. Um, he's very he's a realist, isn't he? Yes, and I don't think there's anything else he can be right now with the position that that England are in. Um, but yeah, pretty honest, pretty pretty direct in the way the way he spoke. Um, I, I'm just sitting here thinking, right, what what do England do? How do they go about it? Is it actually better to to keep India batting for long? You know, make them have to bat for as long as possible because ultimately England aren't, they're not going to win this game. They're, they're not going to score the runs. They're too far behind. So actually, you're now thinking we want to bat as little time as possible but there's still so much time in the game <laughs> how do you go about well, it well it's a 249 lead so i would expect india if I, I think india will get bowled out but realistically um they will be bowling uh, india will be bowling again tomorrow no after matter tea what. tomorrow yeah right, after yeah, tea yeah, yeah. try and take a couple with them and finish it off on day four but just on the ben fox i want to apologize a little bit actually because on day one um i talked about the selection and probably um the keeper batsman, I fell into that trap a little bit, and and it's right. If he's averaging not nearly forty in first class cricket, we've got to give him a lot more credit for actually the all round cricketer that he is. And we seem to automatically think, but no matter how well he plays, Josh Butler comes straight back into the side, uh, or Johnny Bairstow possibly comes in for the third test. But if he can play like that, like he has done today in those conditions, very difficult, and keep like he has, um, he's put himself in. A fantastic position to keep to keep the gloves and back himself to get as many runs as Bearstow and Butler have done because you only have to look at their records over the past two two seasons three seasons and they've not set the world alight have they? 
great to watch Josh Butler, great to watch Johnny Bairstow, but they haven't set the world alight with the runs tally they've, they've, they've put together. Well, any time you give up your shirt, you give someone else an opportunity to come in. And, and someone like Ben Folks, we, we, we've spoken so much about how good we know he is with the gloves. But you're giving him an opportunity to bat in these conditions and show what he can do. Suddenly it sparks conversations like this and everyone's going, well, hold on. He's actually a really good batsman as well. He's not just a wiki keeper. Yeah. So maybe he should be going to Australia. Uh, suddenly you've got Butler who's worked so hard to become first choice and played some great innings. And I don't think there's an argument that he still is. But you're opening the door to that conversation to come up again. And Ben, folks, to be fair to him, coming into this game, he said, Joss is number one. I've just gonna, I'm going to try and take my chance. Fair play to him. That's what he's doing. Joss Butler isn't being dropped by England. Well, we know that. We, we, we know. Well, listen, they, they, they made their choice and they decided um, we've had this conversation, but Johnny Bairstow openly said he wants to bat seven and keep wicket. A, a, a job he oh. did really, really well and scored runs. That's and, not happening. And kept, well, we, we, so they made their decision and they give Butler the gloves and let him bat at seven where he mm-hmm. wants to. But he was always going to be, he was going to play because he was going to come in and change the game and play a different way. He's not done that so far we've not seen that from Josh Butler but what we saw today in very very difficult conditions was a guy give him credit has kept beautifully and the way he battered he showed the technique yeah, you yeah. need to yeah. score runs in India he, he, he did and, and I think the only thing I'd add is I think Josh Butler's kept very well in Sri Lanka and in the first test I think he's worked hard at oh absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he, keeping's improved there's yeah. no doubt about that but he's got to score runs as well Mark. yeah I mean he could bat at six Josh if Ollie, if Ollie Pope could bat at three that you know that would sure help anyway that is another story because that's not part of today's podcast where we've uh, reviewed a day in which 15 wickets fell in chennai 15 wickets i repeat on a very difficult pitch uh, india have ended it 54 for one the man out shubman gill lbw to jack leach for 14 india's lead is 249 that is a commanding way to start the third day tomorrow but uh, before we say goodbye we do so with a look back at what happened today. In comes Moen Ali. Bowls a beautiful off break. That's out stumped, I think. Ben Folks is so oh. sure. Yeah, this is just outstanding from Ben Folks. Oh, that's a terrible bit of bowling, but he's got a wicket with it. Unbelievable. It's definitely a benefit. That's, that's under 14. <laughs> the last point. five minutes in cricket. I mean, what is that? Richard Pandon straight down to Moen Ali. Oh, it's a full toss. Oh, he hit it straight back at him and threw his hands for four. It's been uh, feathered through and he is out, caught behind, second ball. So 3.29, all out. Rory Burns had a disappointing first test match. He's on strike now, there are three slips and he's struck on the pad. He's an appeal for leg before wicket. He was surely heading down the leg side, he's given it. But it was a big wicket to get one with a new ball, especially when at the other end you've got one of the best spinners around in world cricket today, Mark Nicholas. Now Dom Sibley goes down on the sweep. It's going to be taken at short leg. Well, they've gone for and a review. He's walking off. He's walking off. He's had enough. Sibley knows that Sharon. Joe Ruta swept into the leg side. Top edge. Caught it. Short backwards square leg. Ashwin takes the catch. And England are in deep, deep trouble. Change of attack. Oh, and that's taken by short leg. Dan Lawrence has pushed it to short leg. And he's gone for nine, and India's terrific morning continues with a fourth wicket. You don't want to go off and put the kettle on here, do you? You're going to miss something. <laughs> Every single ball, something's happening. Ashwin, once more, tosses. Come on up, and he's bowled, Stokes! Oh, Ben Stokes is furious with this. Is, uh, Ashwin, uh, beg your pardon. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost did me. Mohamed Siraj into the attack for the first time. Right arm, quick down the leg side, and he's taken. Wow. Oh my goodness me, what a catch! Rishabh Pant with his left hand. Rishabh Pant, wow. Should we call him Superman? And shot to tell, left arm round to the left handed Moinelli. It's edged off the keeper's gloves, and Rahane takes the catch on the rebound. It slipped. Ashwin goes in, bolts that one straight, clipped into the onside. Rohit Sharma takes the catch. England 106 for eight as Stone goes for a single. Here's uh, Sharma round the wicket. At out. What a super catch by Rishan Pan diving away to his left side. Stuart Broad now takes strike to R. Ashwin and sweeps and is bowled. England have bowled out 
for 134. And uh, Shubman Gill is coming down the pitch to Moeen Ali and has put him over wide long on for six. Now oh, that's yeah. very close to LBW. In fact, it's out LBW. Jack Leach has got his man. The batsmen look at each other, walk down to have a little chat. And that will do it for day two of this test match. India are 54 for one. After 18 overs of their second innings, the lead is 249.